everybody! I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about IUDs. So those are intrauterine devices and they are a very popular form of contraception. So let's get into it. So what are they? So they are a small plastic device that is inserted into the uterus. So they are a T-shape, but when they insert them, this is folded down, so it's like a stick. So they'll insert it straight, and then as they withdraw, the top part, these part, pops out, and it makes this T-shape, okay? So this is what it looks like after it's been inserted. What does it do? How does it work? It causes a sterile inflammatory response that results in a spermicidal intrauterine environment. So it prevents the sperm from getting there in the fallopian tube, and if some of them happen to get there, it makes it a very uninhabitable place for them to be. So an environment in which the sperm have a hard time surviving. There's two main types. There's the hormonal type, and there's a variety of different ones. There's like Marina and Skyla and things like that. But in general, we're just gonna call them the hormonal type and then the copper type. So the big difference is here is the usage. So the hormonal type, they can be left in for three to five years, whereas the copper, the big braggy thing about the copper is they can be in for 10 years. And this is great. This is a great option for people who cannot handle hormones, okay? So people get the copper because they can't handle the hormones or they want it in for an extended period of time. And both of these are very good, very effective. 98 to 99.9% .9 effective. So that's really, really good. Now let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages of IUDs. The big one is the convenience. With the birth control pill, with the COCs or even the mini pill, right, you have to take it every day at the same time. So you have to remember to do that. With the IUD, you don't have to do that. So there's no daily action and a lot of people really like that about it. It can be removed. So if you want to get pregnant, if you want to have a baby, then they can remove it and then you can get pregnant. It decreases the risk of endometrial cancers. The copper version can be used in emergencies, so after intercourse. So ideally, these are placed before that, right? But the copper one can be used after unprotected intercourse. And also with the copper, it is safer for a lot of people. So people who cannot have hormonal things, hormonal IUDs or even hormonal pills, a copper IUD is a lot safer for them. Some disadvantages include an increased risk of pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic pregnancies. If you're using the hormonal one, it's gonna have a lot of those hormonal side effects like spotting, headaches, and breast tenderness. And the copper one has been associated with increased menstrual pain and bleeding. Now let's talk a little bit about the procedure and how this is actually done. So this is gonna be done in the clinic setting, usually by the doctor or the midwife. The patient might experience sharp cramping during and then right after the procedure, but that shouldn't be there by like the next day. It should be gone by then. You want to instruct them. They should put nothing in the vagina for 24 hours after insertion. So no sex, no tampons, no douching, nothing like that for at least 24 hours. Of course, because this is a medical procedure, they need to sign informed consent saying that they understand the risks and benefits of this. Prior to doing this, they're gonna do a pregnancy test, probably a pap smear and cervical cultures, and all of these things need to be negative before they would allow you to have an IUD. And then we need to do education with the patient about checking for the string. So once a month, they are to check for the string to make sure that it's not missing, it's not longer than normal or shorter than normal. And if any of those things do occur, we need to let them know they have to call us right away and they need to be seen. The big thing that could happen, well one, migration, because anytime you put you know, a foreign object in our body, there is the risk that it might go somewhere else, right? So we wanna make sure that it didn't migrate and go somewhere else. But then the other thing is expulsion. What if it accidentally came out? So how would our patient know that? They're gonna do their string checks, but on top of that, they might have some unusual discharge. 
They might report, you know, abnormal cramping or abnormal spotting. Intercourse will be painful. And these are all well and good, but they also may be asymptomatic. And none of these things are happening and they still have been, you know, expelled. So something to teach them. It may have these symptoms. They may not have these symptoms. But that's why the string check is the priority here. So we need to educate our patients on that. Now let's talk about some common side effects. A lot of patients will report irregular bleeding or spotting for the first three months after insertion. They might report abdominal pain, back pain, or mild headaches. They can have mood changes or acne. And now this is a side effect, but a lot of people see it as a benefit, is amenorrhea after you know using it for a whole 12 months after using it for a year some patients will experience amenorrhea and a lot of people actually really like that they think of that as a good thing <laughs> and then i put this on here too it's not really a side effect but something to look out for your patient cannot have a copper iud if they are allergic to copper so that is something we want to ask about some things we want to tell them to report to us. P-A-I-N-S, pains. So P is for your period is late. So you might be pregnant. So you need to let doctor know about that. A is for abdominal pain. I is for intercourse is painful. So it shouldn't be if intercourse is painful. That's something you need to tell doctor about. That is a sign that it might have been expelled. N, not feeling well, so generalized flu-like symptoms, you might have an infection. Every time we insert something into the body, you know, a foreign object, we always want to be sterile about it as best we can, but anytime we do that, there is a risk of infection. So not feeling well, generalized flu-like symptoms could indicate an infection. And then the S is for the string, so the string is missing, You've done your string check and you can't find it. It's shorter than it's supposed to be or longer than it's supposed to be. So all of these are reasons to contact your provider if you have an IUD. So that was my video on IUDs. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.